I became interested in metal hypersensitivity um, when I was involved in the care of a patient in the ICU. So the patient had come into the hospital with a heart attack. Uh, she had gone into the cath lab, got stented, everything went well. She went to the step-down unit and shortly after that, within the same hospitalization, uh, she developed the same symptoms that had brought her into the hospital. And so they took her back to the cath lab only to find that the stent that was just placed was, was stenosed. And so they, they weren't quite sure what was going on with her, so they restented her and then sent her to the ICU for a closer monitoring. So as I was leaving the room, uh, she said, oh, by the way, though, get me a gown without those snap things on the shoulder. I'm definitely allergic to metal. Did you tell your doctors this? And she said, nobody asked me. As a young woman, like in my late teens with pierced ears, I had found I could only wear certain kinds of earrings. So that was my first kind of indication. Um, and then I had a, um, an accident in my, again, late teens, where I fractured my zygoma and had a plaque put in and then that had to be removed um, a couple of years later. But I never gave it much thought after that until I had a fairly serious car accident where I had several fractures in one of my arms and needed an orthopedic implant. Um, and within a few weeks of that, I had swelling, um, redness, hot, and incredible pain. I never knew about metal hypersensitivity until I started the project. I've asked tons of my peers about it. They've never heard of it. No one in the hospital ever asks about uh, metal allergy when it comes to allergies. And so people truly just don't know. So I went to the doctor, back to the orthopedic specialist who had done the surgery. He validated that I probably was having a reactive um, allergic response to the plate, but it told me that I had no choice but to keep it because I'd had several fractures and he said I didn't have enough bone to keep the arm intact. So I just had to live with it basically was the message. People have uh, complained of an array of uh Symptoms, uh, pain, swelling has been the common um, rashes. And the interesting thing about the rashes is that it's a bleeding rash. There's also been uh, talks about uh, individuals who have gotten like dental implants or braces who have then subsequently developed really bad cases of acne, right? Again, those are things that you wouldn't immediately think could it be associated with the implant that went in the mouth and with the gynecological devices that women put in for birth control reason, that's been like vaginal bleeding. We've seen uh, through the research would be hip implants, knee implants. Uh, we've seen a spinal implant before. Um, you can have reactions to things like pacemakers. Uh, there's stents in your heart that you can have, um, just as a couple examples there. I had, was having other symptoms from my car accident, so I had been recommended to go to, for acupuncture. And secondary kind of response, I found it actually helped with the symptoms of my allergic response. So that became my way of, of um, handling the symptoms of the arm plate. So I left it with it for 10 years. People recognize that, look, I need this implant right now. That's fine. The question is, what would happen if my body doesn't like it? Evidence shows is that when you put metal into the body, it corrodes. And when it corrodes, it releases the ions, which then binds to different things in your body. And that brings about this issue of metal hypersensitivity. So it's vitally important for the public to be asking the healthcare providers, you know, what can I expect? How would my body react to this, right? They may or may not know, but that conversation needs to happen. Eventually it became worse and worse. Like even though I was managing the pain and the inflammation, it, I started to have you know, inflammatory response through my body and what seemed to be autoimmune response. I went to a rheumatologist and asked about the plate and she said, no, that you know, shouldn't be affecting it. So again, I just kept living with it. Well then, eventually I came so I couldn't even lift a light bag of groceries. I, I started to have weakness in my arm. 
the difficult parts to making this diagnosis is that some of the symptoms may actually occur remote, removed from where the implant actually is located, right? So somebody talked about having rashes to their back, but that's not where the implant was. You should at least be asked the question if you've had allergic reactions to any metal, and if you have, be, just be tested for it. And then make sure that whatever metal you're getting in your implant, you're compatible with and you don't have an allergy to it. There is challenges to testing for metal hypersensitivity. And right now, the best test we have is a blood test that looks for memory cells. There is limitations to that, which is that your body needs to be exposed to that metal in order for it to be detected. But certainly, we need more evidence, more research, so that we can make better diagnosis. You can have implants that just don't have nickel in it, or molybdenum, for example, um, chromium. You know, you can have implants that are made without these specific allergens. A colleague of mine had a similar injury and a plate put in, and I ran into her and she told me how she had just come out of hospital to have the plate removed because she had had such reaction to it and so she sent she's a researcher as am I so she sent me all the research that she had gathered around metal implants and their reactivity to them and so that gave me the confidence then to go back to my doctor and say I just need this plate out and even with that I got a lot of resistance um, but I just basically insisted and so I had the plate removed and within a very short time like now I have a normal arm I can move I have the same strength and movement and use of my arm as, I, as my other arm. If we take blood to put in somebody's body, we test them for it, right? If we take organs to put in somebody's body, we test them for it. We do extensive testing before we do that. Why wouldn't we do in this situation? Another interesting thing this problem is posing is that maybe we actually need another specialty that is looking specifically at sort of the immune responses to implantable devices. I've seen everyone across, you know, the spectrum of healthcare, and everyone's missed it. I think just general awareness um, within the healthcare system around metal hypersensitivity could, you know, really impact the lives of a lot of patients. This is one of those issues in our time that all level of researchers can actually uh, come together on to solve. We need the basic science to be doing the bench research. We need people like myself that are doing some patient-oriented research, and then we need population-based research as well. We need engineers, nurses, as well as the surgeons, as well as the biotech companies, and the government, frankly. We need all of those folks to come into this because they all have pieces to to uh, contribute to solving this problem. Mm -hmm.